Welcome to another tutorial. This one's on snapping and snappers. You'll see snappers literally everywhere in the world. I'm going to spawn out a basic example which you can find in the Neos Essentials folder first of all though. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our private UI. We're going to go to Inventory, Neos Essentials, Examples, and then this red and blue cube here. With this, the red cube uh, is stationary or grabbable, and the blue cube will snap on top. Put the blue cube near and it will snap on top. That's the uh, example in the examples folder, but you can see snapping everywhere. As an example from me and myself, if you go to third person camera on my camera UI, you'll now see uh, that when I pull my mask off, my tools live in here by the way, I can put it back on again by just letting go in there. That's snapping too. You'll see this on a bunch of avatars, hats do it, all sorts of things like that. Armor, weapons, utilities, guns, everything does snapping. Snapping's everywhere. Let's reset up this cube from scratch um, and show you how it looks. So back to smooth POV and I'm going to turn off my private UI. And then we're going to make some cubes. So here I've got the dev tool tip. We're going to open up the dev tool tip, go to create new 3D model box, shrink it down. And then I'm going to duplicate it because we need two that are exactly the same size. I'm also going to apply this material to them which is a flat lit toon material, which just makes it a little bit easier to see things. Um, when you first spawn out a cube, it will have this green grid on it. To get rid of that, just uh, secondary select on the dev tool tip and then deselect and then it will go away. I'm also gonna make them red and blue to do this. We're gonna use a color tip. That's inside uh, Essential Tools color tip. Once that's equipped, you can open up the hand menu and set the color. So we need red here. And then we need blue. There we go. We're done with the color tip, so we can de-equip that. We're also done with this material. So we're going to delete the material and the color tip. And so now we've got the red and blue cube again. So here we're going to inspect uh, both sides of this because we need to set up something on both sides. So inspect the red cube. Inspect the blue cube. And then we're going to rename them just so we don't mix them up later. So here, this is the red one. So we're going to say red box. And then here, we're going to say blue box. So there we go. Now we won't confuse them up. So in a snapping operation, there's actually two halves. There is what's called the snapper and the snap target. In our case, the snapper, as in the thing that's going to snap, is the blue box. And the snap target is the red box. So on the red box, we need to attach the snap target. So for that, we go to attach component, transform interaction, snap target. This adds this component here, and we'll talk about it once we've added the snapper. So over here on the blue box, attach component, transform, interaction, snapper. And now you'll see them side by side. You can actually de-inspect things now. So side by side, we have snapper and snap target. Let's get these more in line. There we go. So snap error and snap target. So what we want to do is make the blue cube snap into the red cube. So snap target and snap error have a bunch of settings. Um, I'm going to go through some of them. We're also going to skip some of them as well. For the snap target, we have a snapper whitelist, a snapper keyword whitelist. And on the snapper, we have a target whitelist and a keyword list. These control what can snap between each other. Because this is an operation where we want only one object to snap, we need to use the top one, the snapper whitelist and the snapper target whitelist. So here, we're going to add an element to both of them. And what we want to do is on the blue box, we want the red box to be a snap target in the snap target whitelist. So we grab red box and put it into the snap target here. You see snap target on red box, and then the blue box goes into the snap target, uh, snapper whitelist on the red box. Should 
should be snapping now. We're not, and that's because we need to change the minimum snap distance to be a little bit higher. There you go, did you see it? Now the red box has the blue box underneath it. And if I grab, you'll see the blue box comes out again. Let's increase that minimum snap distance here a little bit more. So we're going to increase this to one. And now you'll see when I bring this closer, it'll do it. Let's increase that to something larger. Let's go 2.5. There you go, that's more like it. So now when this blue box gets close, it will snap. But this isn't ideal because the um, red box is now preventing us from grabbing the blue box. We can fix that quickly by just hitting the blue box here and then doing parent underworld root and then moving the red box. And now we're back and we've got the blue box. But let's improve that. Now to improve that, what we're going to do is create a snap target object or slot for the red, uh, the blue box go to instead of the actual red box itself because the snap target um, is the the center of this you'll see here there's a, a yellow dot in the center there that's where the snap target location is so to set that up we're going to remove the snap oh we're on the red oh there we go we were on the blue box over there from earlier um, so we're going to remove the snap target from the red box here by hitting x and on the red box here we're going to hit the star icon and make a red box child and then we're going to rename that to red box snap target with the red box snap target we can now move this up a little bit so I'm going to move it just to there, and there you'll see there's a yellow dot floating just above the red cube. And we need to reset up that snap target. So attach component, transform interaction, snap target. And then we need to add that element. We'll reset the maximum snap distance to 2, uh, 0.5. In case you haven't told before, uh, figured out by now, the maximum snap distance is how far away an object can be before it'll snap. So here we're saying it must be 2.5 units away before it can snap. And then here on the snapper, we need to clear that whitelist entry. And then on the here, we need to add, oh, we've already added it here. So we add a snapper whitelist and then we just parent them across. So the blue box goes into the first item on the snapper whitelist and the red box snap target goes into the first item on the snap target red list, uh, snap target list here. Now you'll see the blue box snaps to that location rather than inside the red cube. We can now move this down a little bit until these are perfectly aligned. And we've got this again. So we can pull this off, bring it close, it'll snap. Pull it off, bring it close, it'll snap. That's it for a basic snap operation. There's a little bit more going on here um, in the distances and things like that. So you'll see here there is the snap distance which we've talked about there's also an animation distance this makes really cool sorry animation time this makes really cool things if we set this to something like two and then we snap you'll see it glides in so you can do a cool effect with that i'm going to drop that back down to 015 there's also auto snap but i'm not sure what that does Angle deviation is how much it can deviate from the angle of the snap target. And what this means is that you'll see here that the snap target has a rotation value and it's currently set to nothing. If I were to change this rotation value to be diagonal like this, when this box snapped in, so say we snap it facing the right angle, uh, facing flat like this cube, and we snap it in, it will rotate to align with that snap target. So the angle deviation must control um, how much it can deviate from that angle that's set for the snap to happen. This is also indicating a very important thing that needs to happen, which is the snap target must match the location, rotation, and scale of the final resting place of the object. So as an example here, if I change the red box snap target to have a scale that is different, so we're going to go to, actually let's remove it first, I'm going to go to 0 0.5 here, and then we snap it in. 
can see the cube now shrinks because the snap target scale is 0.5 and in a snap it actually parents it underneath that snap target. Let's remove that and when you remove it you'll see it won't go back. So if you wanted it to go back, you have to go up to the top here and reset, oh dear, I reset its scale. The other thing you'll notice is that if an object is too big for a snapper, it won't go in. So here you see this cube is far too big and it won't go in. So we have to shrink it down. And now it will go in again. Let's reset that back to normal. As another option here, we can use snapper keywords here. So I'm going to remove the snapper uh, blue box on the whitelist here. I'm also going to remove it on the uh, whitelist here. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a keyword to this and I'm going to call this blue box or just BB for short. So here we've added a keyword BB. And then over here we're going to add to the keyword list here BB. Now I can take this cube, make a bunch and we'll pick one at random, this one, and it will snap. Let's take another one. It will also snap, but the thing to note here is that two objects won't snap. It's just one that can snap in a snapping operation. This might be good if you had, for example, some sort of puzzle. So here I'm going to unsnap this and we're going to take the red box here and we're going to duplicate it. Slide it along, duplicate it and slide it along. Close this inspector. So now we've got um, a set of boxes that will snap into it. Maybe we can make something different about one of these boxes. Let's get that color tip out again. And we'll make one green, or a pink one as well. Let's go for a yellow one as well. And so now what you could do is you could set up something whereby any of these can snap due to the keyword. But maybe there's a certain order that they need to be in and you can detect that order using logics. That's a bit past this uh, tutorial though. Um, but it's just an example of how you might set it up and why you might use keywords. And that's so you can have interchangeable operations. This also lets other people make compatible targets for your, um, for your snap target as well. So they can make compatible snappers. If they know the keyword, they can lock things in here. That's about it for snapping. I do want to show, um, one more thing, which is how to do a sort of more complex operation here. I'm going to have to look around through my inventory and find something suitable because I haven't planned a Z. Uh, so let's see, 3D models. Uh, trying to think of something real quick here. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Okay, sorry for the pause there. What we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, I'm gonna take this traffic cone here, which I made. And we're going to make it so that this... Uh, let's do a f piece of fruit, actually. This piece of fruit here, do an orange. Uh, will snap to the top of it. And what I'm going to show here is just doing it with a um, more advanced objects, basically just to make sure that I'm covering all cases here. So what we want is that this occurs here. And I'll show you how I do this to avoid a little bit of uh, problems. So say we wanted it to be this size, this you know what, we're actually going to do a more regular object that's more round. Let's do, let's do an animal. All right, we'll use a cat. So we've got a cat here. So here you can see that we want the cat to be, let's say, facing this way. And this will show how the rotation and scale of a snap target is important. 
and how I usually do about this. So we want the cat to snap to the top of the cone here. So to do that, what I would do is I would open up the cone in the inspector. And I would go to the top of the cone. The cone is just a glued object made in game. And then I would also go to the cat and I would um, go to the top of the cat. And I would first of all parent the cat to the cone and then we don't need this inspector. And then what we've got here under Gatto is the exact place that the cat needs to be listed here. So this scale, this rotation, and this position. So what we can do here is by using this button, we'll create a parent object here. And this now has the correct position, rotation, and scale. And we can make this our snap target. And that's just a shortcut that I do, um, so you don't have to make the snap target manually, that parent button there. So here we can go, and we're going to call this snap target, or ST for short. Attach component, transform interaction, snap target, and then on the cat. Attach component, transform interaction, snapper. And we'll do the whitelist here, so add and add. And then we put the snap target into the cat. And the cat into the whitelist here. I'm going to up this to 2.5 again. It's probably too big in this case, but it helps us uh, demonstrate it quickly. So we can put this cat over here. Deselect everything. Hold on. There we go. Close all the inspectors. And now this cat will line up perfectly. So I can even, um, if we go over here a little bit, I can even turn the cat around. So its butt is facing us. Go near, and you'll see it snaps and turns around. If we go back to that snap target, We can also set the animation time here to back up to 2. Let's go 2.5 again. And then this time, bring the cat over, turn the cat around, let go, bring it closer. And you see now it's going to turn and face back at us from the top of the, cube, uh, the cone there. That snappers for you. That's all I've got to show you. There's a lot more you can do there, and there's some other options I kind of glazed over. Um, try them out in-game. If you have issues, let anyone know in-game. They'll be happy to help you out. I haven't met a player yet that hasn't needed a snapper at a certain point, so uh, you should need one at a certain point in, the, in uh, whatever you're building. For now, goodbye from me and goodbye from the cat. I think it's called Gatto. Bye, Gatto.